official newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Wanted Nevada for jumping bail on murder charges, L.H. Musgrove, a smooth-talking gunfighter from Mississippi, finally drifted into Denver, Colorado, where in 1868 he organized and headed the boldest gang of raiding horse thieves the old West has ever known. money, Musco. That's almost as good as having it. Not to me. I believe money and I feel it in my pocket. Look, why don't we dump this herd on a fast market and clear out? You know you don't get top prices for horses that way. Yeah, but it'd be safer than stretching our luck. Forget it. Meet me in Denver in five days. By that time, I'll have one of the finest pieces of grazing land in Colorado. Well, Musco, if you pull it before us, so maybe you can do it again. But someday you're gonna... Forget someday. Look me up through the Stockman's Bank and Trust. So long. A horse herd belonging to the Kling Ranch had been stolen from the corrals of the Southwest Railroad near Julesburg in the early part of September 1868. I got orders from headquarters to run down the rustlers. I'm Matt Clark, investigator for the railroad. come to the right place, Mr. Musgrove. It so happens we foreclosed on a ranch you might just be looking for. The old Allen spread, about 10 miles from here on the road to Golden. How many acres? Around 100, including a small ranch house. Nothing fancy, though. So how much? We're asking 15,000. Mm -hmm. That's a little steep for me, Mr. Blair. All my cash is tied up in horse flesh. Were you caught in that Texas drought this past spring? Darn near ruined me. I've got some blooded horses I couldn't afford to lose. Took every cent I had for hay and grain. That's why I had no alternative but to move north to Colorado. And what do you value this herd? Oh, conservatively, 25,000. Ought to be more than enough collateral to take care of the Allen spread. What can you lose? If I don't make the payment, you get the ranch back, my horse herd to boot. If those are your terms, I'd be a fool to turn you down. Good. Oh, uh, just one more thing, Mr. Musgrove. Hmm? I assume you do have credit reference. <laughs> Suspicious lot, you bankers. Oh, just sound practice, sir. It's actually as much protection for investors as for us. Well, why are the Central Bank in San Antonio? They'll tell you what you want to know. Uh, another thing, Blair. Uh, what do you think it'll take to put the Allen Ranch in shape to operate? Oh, $1,000 ought to do it. In that case, you'd better advance me $1,000 in cash. Just uh, tack it on to the price of the ranch. Oh, uh, why, uh, of course, Mr. Musgrove, of course. Uh, just step into the cashier's office. I'll be with you as soon as I send this. Would that be the message from Mr. Blair to the Central Bank in San Antonio? If it is, it wouldn't be any business of yours. Answer my question. Yeah. I'll give you $500 not to send that message. Mr. Blair expects an answer. If he doesn't get an answer, I'll lose my job. I'll write the answer. If you keep your mouth shut, you'll never know the difference. But I can't. If you don't, I'll kill you. Now, take that pad. Write what I've got to say. We have a regular form for incoming messages. It's in that drawer. All right, get it.
Sorry, Mr. Place is closed. They got a new agent. That's why I'm here. I am the new agent. Oh? That is, until the company hires another man. I'm Margaret Jones. Well, pleased to meet you, Miss Jones. I'm Sheriff Sims. How do you do? So you're a detective for the Southwest Railroad. That's right. The company operates this office. I'm to make an investigation and report on the murder. When you were called in, Sheriff, is this about the way things looked? Well, just about, miss. Except for the corpse. Which is right over there, with a bullet hole plumbed through the middle of his chest. I see. Did anybody hear the shot? No, I guess not. Just about closing time last night. Most folks were gone home for supper. What do you make of it, Sheriff? Do you have any ideas, any suspects? Appears like a plain case of robbery to me. Was this telegram here when you found him? Yeah. Yeah, it was the last message to come through. Joe must have been killed just as he finished writing it. It's from the Central Bank at San Antonio about a man named Musgrove. Does that name mean anything to you? No, nope, don't normally Musgrove around here. It's addressed to a Mr. Blair at the Stockman's Bank and Trust. Oh, Blair. He's president of the bank. It's probably more important to him than it is to us. I better deliver it. Well, there's no copy. Huh? A duplicate. It's always routine. I guess he never had a chance to make one. I'll do it. By November, I had trailed the stolen herd to a ranch 10 miles outside of Denver. town, sign some papers, soften up the banker a little more. Somehow I didn't think you'd do it this time. No trouble at all, huh? No, nothing to worry about. Of course, the uh, telegraph operator wasn't very smart. And you had to kill him? Now, don't get yourself upset, Ed. It looked like a simple case of robbery. Come on in, have some coffee and grub. I'll tell you all about it. I continued on to Denver. I wanted to find out more about the ranch and the men who operated it before contacting the local authorities and moving in for the arrest. I thought you were in Nebraska on a case. And I thought you were in Cheyenne. Well, I was. They sent me here a couple of days ago when the express agent was killed. Oh. And don't you try moving in. This is my case. Don't you worry your pretty head about that. I've got troubles of my own. Horse thieves. Well, if you're going to be in town for a while, there's a real nice hotel right across the street. Do folks here in town know that you're a center sleuth? Well, the sheriff does, and I suppose he's told his cronies. Then I'd better board someplace else. My horse thieves don't know me, and I'd just as soon keep it that way. Say, will you wire headquarters that I'm here in Denver as Bill Porter, horse trader for the Overland Stage Company? And that I've located their base of operations. Just as soon as I find out for sure who their leader is, I'll make some arrests. Got that? I've sent out enough messages by now to know how. And put it in code. I don't want anybody reading my mail. See you later, Jonesy. And say, don't forget, if you get lonesome, don't get in touch with me. And just what makes you think I would? After a few inquiries around town, I learned that the ranch under suspicion was recently bought by an L.H. Musgrove and that the Stockman's Bank and Trust had handled the deal. Happy to be of service, Mr. Porter. Always glad to welcome new business to Denver. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Blair. Well, sir, what's on your mind? 
horses, Mr. Blair. I'm a buyer and trader for the Overland Stage Company. I was recommended to come down here and do business with that new outfit that moved on to a ranch out near Golden. Oh, yes, the old Allen place. I sold it just the other day to a man named Musgrove. I take it you'd like references on him before doing business, is that it? That's right. With all these horse thieves operating in this part of the country, you can't be too careful. Well, I'm sure I can put your mind at ease, Mr. Porter. Uh, here's a report on uh, Musgrove's credit reference from the Central Bank in San Antonio. <laughs> His mother couldn't have done much better than this. If I had a reference like that, I'd keep it under glass. I assume that answers all your questions? I think it answers all I need to know. Well, I'll be running along, Mr. Blair. Thanks very much for your time. Don't mention it. Glad to be of service. Oh, Mr. Musgrove. <laughs> Speaking of the devil, so to speak, Mr. Porter, here's the very man we were discussing. Mr. Porter, Mr. Musgrove. Mr. Porter's a horse buyer for the Overland Stage Line. I was telling him you had quite a few horses for sale. Well, delighted to know you, sir. Same to you. In the market for draft horses? Draft and saddle. Well, I have some fine working stock you might be interested in. Also, some high-stepping pacers from Tennessee. Sounds very interesting. I'd like to see them. Tell you what I'll do. I've got a little business to finish here. After I'm through, I'll take you out. You gonna be free? Anytime you say. Fine. Meet you out in front in 15 minutes. Good. Did you, uh, say his name was Porter? That's right. He was quite anxious to make sure you weren't a horse thief before he did any business with you. Can't blame a man for being careful. All I had to do was show him that credit reference from the central bank in San Antonio. I answered all his questions. Now, here's the property deed. Look it over carefully before you sign. Mr. Blair, if I couldn't trust a respectable banker like you, the world would be in a pretty sad state. Jonesy. A couple of things I want done in a hurry. Have headquarters run a routine check on a man named Musgrove. Then why the central bank in San Antonio asking for the same information. The initials of Musgrove are L.H. Musgrove? That name's so familiar. Worry about it on your own time, sweetheart. Right now, get the wires out. Where will you be when the answer comes in? I'll stop here when I get back in town. See you later. All right. I knew I had to have very definite evidence to offset the credit reference on Musgrove that Mr. Blair had shown me. The most likely place to find that evidence was at the ranch. So I was waiting for Musgrove according to our appointment. You sent for me, Miss Jones? I think I have a clue to the murder, Mr. Sims. Oh? Uh -huh. Remember that telegram we found, the last one that came in before Joe was killed? The one for Mr. Blair at the bank? That's right. About a Mr. Musgrove, a credit reference from the Central Bank in San Antonio. Look, here's an answer to another inquiry about the same man to the same bank. Only this time they say they've never heard of him. <laughs> Let's have that again, Miss Jones. Slowly. Another detective, a friend of mine, is here in town investigating a band of horse thieves. He suspects a man named Musgrove. Don't you see it's all beginning to tie together? Well, go on, go on. Suppose Musgrove did write that telegram himself, the one we delivered to Blair. Suppose he threatened that express agent and had to shoot him. You really think that Musgrove shot Joe? There's one way we can find out. If Musgrove did write that credit reference telegram himself, maybe we could check the handwriting with the legal papers he must have signed at the bank. Sounds like a good hunch, Miss Jones. And if it's right, Mr. Sims, we'll have our man before nightfall, plus a few horse thieves thrown in. Let's go see Mr. Blair. I'll get my man to round up some of the stock. Meanwhile, there's a couple of those Tennessee pacers in the barn I was telling you about. All right, I'll look them over. Do that.
partner, Ed Franklin, Porter. Howdy. How do you like him? Well, looks like a pretty good horse. How much you want for him? I don't like practical jokes involving guns, mister. Take his gun, Ed. I think you two have got some explaining to do. You'll get it. First of all, we'll go in the house and have a little sociable drink. After I've told you about myself, I'll expect the same courtesy from you. Let's go. Come on in, pull up a chair. I uh, guess you recognize the brand on that horse, huh, Porter? That's right, Cling Ranch. Now that you've discovered it, I don't imagine you'll be interested in buying any of my stock. Naturally, I don't want to buy any stolen horses. Naturally. I suppose you want my assurance that this need go no further. It'll take more than your assurance, Porter. It'll take your life. Better take a drink. You'll need it. Oh, thanks. I sort of like to choose the company I drink with. Look, I've got a big operation going here. I can't afford to have anything go wrong. A man that's interested in buying horses doesn't go to a banker for information. I know most of the horse traders in this part of the country. I don't know any one of them by the name of Porter. All right. Suppose I did blunder into something that was none of my business. Is there any reason for you to kill a man? I've killed men for a lot less reason. Porter, I know you're a detective. You, uh, you understand why this has to be done, don't you, Ed? Stop talking about it. Shoot him and get it done with. No, that wouldn't be very smart, Ed. Banker knows that this man came down here with me. No time at all. We'd have the law snooping around, asking too many questions. Then what's the use of going through with this? Let's leave the whole thing and get out. No, stop your whining. Listen, get the picture clear. This man talked to us about horses. We uh, had a few drinks. He drank too much. On the ride back to town, his horse threw him. He fell on his head, broke his neck. He uh, reeks of whiskey. Sit down. It was an accident. Get the picture now? Yeah. But something tells me it won't work. If it doesn't, your plans for owning the biggest ranch in the country will blow up in your face. It'll work. Get the horses. Suspicion of murder. Who'd I murder? The express agent, Joe Smith. Give me your guns. Franklin and Russ in the house. Take care of him.
We had Musgrove and Franklin in jail on charges of horse stealing. Charges that I could be sure of. Jonesy was trying to show me she had a strong case of murder against Musgrove based on the circumstantial evidence of the fake telegram and a similarity in the handwriting. Now look, here's the telegram Musgrove faked for himself. And here's the property deed that he signed for the banker. The handwriting's the same. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, Jonesy. I hate to take a man in on a murder charge with that kind of evidence. Guess it don't make any difference, though. He's gonna be hanged for horse stealing anyway. But headquarters told us that Musgrove's wanted in two states for murder charges. And everything points to him being the man who killed the express agent. Come on in, Sheriff. We've been talking over this Musgrove case. Do you think we've got enough evidence to pin a murder charge on him? Well, maybe we won't have to worry about that anymore. Why not? Musgrove and Franklin were just let out in bail. But they're wanted in two states already for jumping bail. Ain't none of my doing. Judge signs the bail bonds. Trial's set for two weeks from now. By that time, they'd be a thousand miles away. Give me that evidence, Jonesy. Where are you going now? I'm going to see the judge and try to talk him into rearresting Musgrove on a murder charge. The way it turned out, we never did see the judge that afternoon. Several other citizens heard of Musgrove's release and liked it even less than I did. The only difference was their method was more direct. Going somewhere, boys? Yeah, then we take a little ride down to Golden. Take care of some unfinished business. I wouldn't worry about that, Musgrove. You aren't going to have any business, finished or unfinished. Hey, Musgrove! In November 1868, the case of L.H. Musgrove came to an abrupt and final end, hanged by the irate citizens of the town. Well, looks like we're a little late, Sheriff. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we better take him in. Yeah. <laughs> 